Good morning, Hawaii. Good morning, this brand new year of 2007. Mm -hmm. We are going to go to heaven in 2007. That doesn't mean you are raptured. We mean that we want to bring heavenly things to you. Happy things, happy stories, happy testimonies, happy songs. Things that will inspire you and encourage your heart as you're going along. And sometimes you're just trudging along under such a burden. Hasha, good morning, Pastor, darling. Good morning, Mom. And my darling daughter, Michelle, is back with me again. I'm so glad. I'm back. She's back. Scary, and you better huh? know, boy, anything can happen when my daughter and I get together. <laughs> we travel together now, and we share mutual joys and mutual sad things like our daddy, your daddy, and my husband being uh, in the caregiving home in Arcadia. And, and uh, he has Alzheimer's. Sometimes when I say to people that he's in Arcadia, they think he's in a, an apartment, <laughs> just having a great time, but they don't realize that, that he is, has Alzheimer's and it's progressing and it's very sad for me and the family. But I want to tell you something, we've got the Lord and that makes a difference, doesn't it? That makes a difference because the Lord helps me to take that sadness and turn it into understanding how other people feel. And you know what too, Mom, when you're a Christian, you know that just being on the earth isn't going to be the last time that we're going to see Dad. We're going to see Dad up in heaven and he's going to be normal and healthy again and that's what I look forward to. Yeah. I look forward to him coming and saying, hi, honey, hi. Where you been? Why have you been yeah. this long? I've been waiting for a long time for you. And he'll have his right mind again. Right. Yes. And yes. it'll be so great. And he'll be full of strength and energy and he'll be a young man again. Yes. And I don't want to talk too much about it because I'll start crying. Okay, all right? no crying. Okay, That's no crying. later. And you know, uh, there's a, something new that we're doing at Heartlight. Yes. You're doing two new shows. Tell us about the two new shows. Well, before the old shows went off, the Lord prompted my heart that I needed to do something different. And not that it wasn't good, what I hope what we did was good in the past in 2006. Right. And then also my station manager and I, we decided to put two shows together for the sake of having the crew come together on that one day doing two shows. So this is my first time of actually doing one sh live show and then one tape show right after, one after the other. But I figured, Michelle, God wanted to stretch me a little bit. Yes, yes, and they're prophetic. The second show is prophetic. Yeah, the first one's happy, go lucky, not go lucky, go blessed, happy, go blessed. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be full of the joy and yes, testimonies yes. and singers, and we're going to do things that you've not seen done yet. And even my daughter's going to sing again. And she's scary. going to be here today. Second scary not thing today. today. Yeah, well, it's Maybe, a, yeah, not today. Not today. It's a good show, scary thing. Yeah, it's a good honey. scary. It's like the movie. 
And we're going to have one show will be prophetic. I'm going to teach on what I really do at yes. the Prophetic Cafe. That's exciting. Why we believe in prophets and not psychics, okay? And all about that stuff. But right now, that's the second show that we'll be doing later on, Michelle. Right, right. Right now, we're going to talk about uh, our, how God has brought to my little prophetic cafe a wonderful family. Yes. And I saw them perform, and I saw Pastor and his wife and the whole family perform. And you know, I love to promote families that are in God, yes. and moving in God. Yes. And we know that many members in our families, sometimes including my own, they're not all together in the Lord. And that's all right. We still move in the Lord, and we pray for those who are not moving in the Lord. But I see a lot in this family that are moving for the Lord. And they're going to be singing story. To, I mean, well, when I say story, it's kind of we are doing something very unusual, Michelle. You asked me what? It was the new beginnings, or what, what are we doing that's new and unusual? Well, we're taking the songs as our lovely Kuule came, and she sang with her dad as he played, and he was a musician for 40 years. Yes, wow. Pastor Moki. Wow. Smoky and he was Moky. so good, they called him Smoky Moki. Smoky Moki. And now I've got him on, and he's my he, Smoky Moki. He's going, what? Smoky what? <laughs> How'd they find out about that? Well, he'll tell you that later. Yes, yes. But they are going to be performing, and his lovely wife and mother, I mean, the mother, she'll introduce all of the family to you in just a few minutes so you can get acquainted because these are going to be the band behind us Okay. for as long as the Lord right. keeps us living, I hope. Okay. <laughs> and That's a little while. Whatever God wants. And uh, Kuule has been given a gifting, Michelle, yes. of taking all the oldie but goodie songs yes. and bringing the word of the Lord into them instead. I love it. Yeah, and you're going to hear it. You're yes. going to hear it for the maybe second time. I did it one other time, but on the other show, but you're going to hear it. And you're going to hear lots of these songs. She and her dad, he plays behind and she sings, and you're going to love it. Over at the Prophetic Cafe, I had a lot of Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, all kinds of people come. And when they heard Kuule singing, as she sat there on the stool there. They heard her singing. They loved it. They clapped their hands. Aww. And as the joy of the Lord was there between the mother, uh, the daughter and the father, they loved that. Yeah. And then Pastor Moki too talked story. And it is good story. He always has something good to say. Yeah. And we have a guest to give testimony. We'll always have that, Michelle. Yes, that's good. One really bang up testimony. And that happens to be Arthur. Kuule's husband. Yes. And so he's going to give his whole story to you today. And you want to hear that because, you know, they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Right. right. And testimonies are good because we can cut, kind of live through them. And we say, well, if it happened to him and it's all bad and it's all good, then all this bad that's happened to me can turn into all good because God has a plan for every life. No matter how bad something is, God can turn it into good. Yeah? Yes, yes, always, always. That's the Christian's, our motto thing, you know? That all things work together for good yeah, for to them that are called mm -hmm. according to God's purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're all called according to God's purpose. So I would like to say, Pastor Moki <laughs> and Mrs. Moki, would you like to take it away and tell me who's the family, Mrs. Moki, in front of you? Certainly. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to introduce our family to you. Uh, this is the monarch of the family, uh, <laughs> Moki Moki. This is Pastor Moki, our monarch. Praise the Lord. Um, this is the head of the Hadeen family, Pastor Art, mm. his wife, wow. Kule, our songstress. The, uh, the oldest of our grandchildren, Hilani Hadeen, the oldest grandson, Joseph Hadeen. And we have little Moki here. <laughs> he's he's our, our star drummer. 
<laughs> and uh, our little guy, he's uh, little Lopaka Hadeen. He's blue-eyed and blonde, but he can speak Hawaiian, read and write. We're really proud of him. So, and I'm Lea Aloha. And so we hope to entertain you, bless you this morning in song. And we, uh, we want to be a true blessing, and we want to do God's will in song for you. And Pastor Moki, how did you get that name, Smokey Moki? Smokey Moki, oh my goodness. Smoky. I was back, uh, I was in the music field. I played music professionally, big time, and then... Uh, 40 years. Yeah, about 40 years. That's big time, honey. Yeah. That is. So, you know, I went to an audition up there in the mainland, playing saxophone, I was a good saxophone player. I said, what do you think? Can I join your band? They said, you know what? You go over and practice some more. I got so dis discouraged. But they were good. They were monsters up there. So I said, you know what? But I can sing over your horn section. And I said, OK, come up. And I sang over his horn section, right over the section. And everybody came alive. The whole band came alive. And that's where I got my name, Smokey Mookie. So every time I walk in, was say, there's Smokey Mookie coming in. And I had the privilege of taking uh, Ku'ule and her dad Pastor Moki, up to Dick Jensen in the hospital at Kaiser, and we sang for half an hour with Pastor Frank Deal there. We sang to him Ooh, the old songs, remember? And yeah. his hands, you know, were going like this on the, he couldn't do a lot of moving, but we could see that he was really enjoying it because his hands were moving to the timing. And we sang every song that we could think of, the yeah. oldies and the goodies, Back right? And, and you've got to get used to that because that's what we're going to do. We <laughs> are going to bring the old good things, just like the old good gospel test uh, songs, you know, the oldies but goodies. And Ku'ule has added the words that the Lord has given to her. And she, you're making a, a tape now, aren't you, Ku'ule? CD. She sure a is. CD. A CD. Yeah. So when you hear these, and you hear my daughter singing her new ones too, you're going to know that you can get them some other place and you're going to hear them plenty on this show, huh? Because we feel we're going to go into the hospitals, into the nursing homes like my husband's at, and we're going to go into places and bring them joy and peace. And by the way, you do go into nursing homes. Yes, we do. And churches. And churches. All of you, right? All the churches. You're Different still churches. kicking? Yes. yes. Still kicking. Yeah. <laughs> so from the papa to the, ba to the baby, you're yeah. all kicking. They're all kicking. Okay, start yeah. kicking, young man. <laughs> One, two, three, oh. One day I was walking in a world of sin, no rest for my weary soul. And then I met a man yeah. who said he'd be my friend, and all my burdens he did roll. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. And since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. Joy in my heart, joy in my heart, joy in my happy day. Joy in my hands, joy in my feet, joy in every way. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. I got joy. joy. my mind made up I tell it everywhere I go there ain't nothing gonna turn me around since Jesus is in control he took those worldly desires he gave me heavenly fire now I got a brand new goal and since I met this man called Jesus Christ I got the joy 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 in my soul joy in my heart Joy in my mind, the joy in the happy day. Joy in my hands, joy in my feet, joy in every way. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man, our Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy.
Praise Yay. the Lord. Thank you very much. You give me joy. Thank you you give me Praise joy in Jesus. Give me joy. Hey, here today. joy is the strength of the Lord. And yes. if you ain't got joy, you ain't got strength. That's what I found out. And so you're bringing the people joy, right, Pastor Amen. Mokey? Amen, amen. And you know, what's your next song, dear? Uh, the Bible's meant for reading. Bible's meant for reading. Now this song is a really showstopper as far as I'm concerned. Every time Kuile would come over to the, did I say it right, Kuile or Kuile? Kuile. Kuile. Every time you'd come to the Prophetic Cafe, I wanted you to sing that song. Those boots. <laughs> and, and tell them how, now give me a little witness of how God gave this whole gifting to you. We've got time. <laughs> oh, I don't think anybody wants to hear that. Most of my anointing actually comes in the car, driving to work, or in the shower, because those are the only two places I have any privacy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my prayer time. That's where I get a lot of my songs. <laughs> well, that's good. but. Were you a little girl when you first started to cha change a song, or how? What was your no, age? No, no. Um, so how did you know you were going to do that? Years, actually. Well, no, I take that back. When um, my husband and I went to school on the mainland, we went to um, Bible school, and during the time we were there, we we were um, the youth pastors at our church, and um, we started up a a monthly. Thing where we would take our youth out and, and get other youth groups together and have um, uh, music. We'd have a music time. And um, my dad was an experienced musician, but without him, I didn't know anything. So we started taking songs we were familiar with that we knew other musicians would be able to play, like um, Rocky Robin. And I changed the words to Holy Spirit. So that was the start, I think. And I only did about three songs at that time. But within the last couple of years, the Lord has given me more and more songs. And I like it. I like them. <laughs> They're really, like really good. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> so this one is of his boots. And wasn't that Frank Sinatra's daughter's song? Yes, yeah. yes it was. And it, I always was. prayed for her when <laughs> I heard that song. I pray for all the artists, you know, <laughs> and all the people that are in the world, the entertainment world. But you're going to sing? Tell them a little bit about that song. Um. Or nothing. Like Just like many it. of the other songs, it's whatever the Lord, you know, sometimes you're listening to the radio and you hear a song, and I like to listen to the oldies. <laughs> I'm an oldies. Um, but when I hear the song, I sometimes I hear something else, and I know it's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. So I try to write it down right away. And If you're it, not it in the shower, the yeah. you get out of the shower and write it down. Get a little water. Yeah. <laughs> so you just hear the song and then you say, oh, instead of these boots are made for walking, you yeah. say this Bible's I, made I for reading. I start hearing what, it, what the words sh should or could Said. be. Yeah, and yeah. Um, that's the same thing that happened for with Once in My Life. I know you like that one, too. And Lord, I love that one. Yeah. I, I was hearing um, Stevie Wonder actually was singing it. It was more upbeat. We oh, took yeah, it down yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. but I heard different words when I he sang it. slower, it. too, yeah. And your dad, he just kind of helped you into that because he knows all these wonderful old songs. And even in their church, they like to bring the melodies out, and people love that at church. Yes, they they love to hear that. They feel at home, don't they? Yeah. There's yeah. something about the old music that is so wonderful, and I love them too. Yeah. So would you like to sing that? And sure. maybe you'd even honor us with one more song of that, Were Once in My Life. I love that too, if you have time. <laughs> All right. If you're inclined to. <laughs> All right. Go for it, Boots. saying there'll be time for God later. You caught up in the worldly things you do. You're not following where the good Lord's leading. You're goofing off and acting like a fool. But the Bible's meant for reading, and that's what you should do. If you read and pray each day, you'll be amazed what God will do. When you ought to be truthing <laughs> And you keep running Instead of getting things straight <laughs> You keep saying There's plenty of time for changing <laughs> But if you wait too long It may just be too late <laughs> The Bible's meant for reading And that's what you should do If you read and pray each 
day you'll be amazed what God will do. You keep playing things you shouldn't be playing. Do, 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 do. And you keep thinking that you'll never get burned. Do, 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 do. The devil, he done played that game before you. Do, 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 do. And an eternity in hell is his return. Do, 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 do. But the Bible's meant for reading. And that's what you should do. If you read and pray each day, you'll be amazed what God will do for you. Are you ready now? Then let's start reading. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, it reads, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and not that of yourselves, it is a gift of God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it reads, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and heal their land. Bible is a truth, and the truth shall set you free. You know, I like, I love that. If, if, if they could hear the words really clear. That when I hear it, I go home and I'm, I'm driving, I'm going, da, 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 da. your songs, you know, they just get your, your feet and your heart beat going. Your feet beat and your heart beat going too. But what was that other song? Do you think you'd have a, a moment to sing that for me, the once in a lifetime? Oh. You think, could you do that or you're not ready? Right. Uh-oh, I told you, you gotta be ready, Eddie. Okay. Cause <laughs> Thank Two, you. Three, in my life I met someone who freed me he saved me from all my sin for once unafraid I can go where he leads me he gives me strength deep within for once I can touch what my heart used to dream of long before I knew the way, the life, the truth. That's what Jesus Christ can do, yeah, yeah, yeah. For once in my life, I won't let Satan hurt me. Not like I've been hurt before. For once, I've got someone I know won't desert me. I'm not alone anymore. For once I can say, this is mine, you can take it. As long as I know I've got God, I can make it. For once in my life, I've got joy and liberty. For once in my life, I won't let Satan hurt me. Not like I've been hurt before. For once, I've got someone I know won't desert me. I'm not alone anymore. For once, I can say, this is mine, you can take it. As long as I know I've got God, I can make it. For once in my life, I've got joy and liberty. in your life you need some joy and liberty too you know 
we've got the old Christian song that it comes in. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And there's a difference. There's a difference. When you've got the joy and the love of the Lord in your heart, you know what happens? You start singing and you start moving and you start grooving. And it doesn't matter what the world is doing. You're in the, your own world of the Lord. That's why it's good to keep on good music in your home and in your car. Good, godly music and songs. And I want to introduce you to Pastor Arthur. You know what? I didn't know you were a pastor when you said you were going to come on. And I just thought you were Kool-Aid's husband. You know oh. what? Let's get a mic for Art. His mic isn't working His mic right is now. right on. Pull it it's up not here. Working. Oh. Let's put a little higher. Put a little just higher. a little bit higher. Or put it right in your mouth. Because we don't want to miss one. anything <laughs> you have to say. Hello? Is that good? <laughs> you know. Hello? How is it? Hello? Testing? Okay. Yeah. You just put it right on okay. his little collar. Right up we're there. we're good to go. There we go. Yeah. As okay, go. I was saying, I didn't know you were a pastor until you you set it up there, and you guys, your church is a church of love. Yes. What an apropos name. What a great name. The church of God, because God is love. Whosoever is born of God is born of love. That's right. And you and your wife, does that make Ku'ule a pastor too? Yes, she is. Whoa! <laughs> pastor Ku'ule! And anybody other pastors I don't know about <laughs> in the family? And uh, Leah Aloha, Moki's wife. Aloha, you are a pastor? Pastor, pastor Mrs. Moki. Yeah. And then we've got some evangelists up there, they don't know it, yeah. and some teachers <laughs> and some prophets all there, the young men, and they don't know it yet, but I know it. <laughs> okay. All the disciples. <laughs> and, you know, Moki himself can sing for 20, 30 minutes and just on the beautiful songs of the Lord. And we'll do that. But you said to me the other day when we were having a nice luncheon together with the family to discuss what we wanted to do on this show. Mm -hmm. And I said, bring me somebody who's got really good testimony. You said, I do, I do. And I said, okay, Pastor Arthur. And you, could you talk story into the camera? Sure. And tell me, um, were you always a Christian, or what happened? No, my, my dad is, um, was Swedish, and he was um, raised as a Lutheran. And my mom, being Navajo Indian, she was uh, Native American. And uh, in the household, uh, we had the Christian beliefs and the Native American ways. So I was somewhat confused. And then um, <laughs> you didn't he kind of for were. Yeah. Uh, a Native American. Yeah, or so it was kind of like, you know, it was kind of like, I, how do you put it all together? So I, um, my dad forced us to go to Lutheran Church, all of us, four kids. And um, so I had some idea there was a God. But it, when I became a teenager, I just, uh, I said, I just stopped going because I believed that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. But I well, don't think you, so. What made you believe that? You just thought like a lot of people believe. I don't know. I believe. just. I just I just thought die. I was going to die, I was going to go to heaven, you know. But I didn't know that at the time that that was just a lie from the devil. And so when I got into high school, I started getting into, uh, started getting into drugs. I started um, getting into alcohol. I got into pornography and I was um, smoking marijuana, yeah. and doing cocaine, doing hashish, opium. Wow. Um, and started mixing the drugs and I started to drop acid. Was there anything it, you didn't do? <laughs> I just, <laughs> All these assorted sins that yeah, you got. Just, I mean. you, know, just, you know, I just got really deep and in, uh, involved in with the, the rock and roll, too, at the time, too. That was all part of it, you know. The drugs the drug culture, and the music yeah. and all. And you were a young man of? Uh, I was, uh, let's see, it started when I was 15. And I didn't, and I didn't stop until 1983. And you were how old then? Uh, I was 23. 23. Yeah. Were you married with Kule then? No, no, no. I, no, no, I no. haven't met. I didn't okay, meet her. Okay, you yet. hadn't met her yet. The so, good stuff was yet to come. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, uh, being involved with so much stuff, as uh, I was dropping the acid, one concert, an ELO concert, I think, we went in the bathroom, bought some acid, and we dropped it. And at that time, I didn't know it at the time, but I know it now that uh, something came inside me. So now I had a demon inside me. <laughs> But I didn't know it, but I know it now. 
So I became it was a bad possessed. feeling. Yeah, it was yeah. not a good feeling like when the Lord comes yeah. into your heart. So I was demon possessed and I was like, I was in a living hell, like almost torment. Yeah. When and you say, Pastor, I was demon possessed, you know, that's a horrible place to be. Yes. There's no peace, there's no rest, there's no nothing. You're confused, your mind is hurting, you think everybody's against you, and, and, and nobody loves you. And I was paranoid of everything. You were paranoid. I was paranoid of everything. Yeah. You know. These demons, they play with your mind. Oh, yes. And, yeah. and put fear and everything in. And there's many, many, many precious people now who belong to God, and they're out in that, doing that right now. Mm. They've slipped away out of the hands of the Lord, and these spirits come in, don't they? Yes. Because they've invited them in. They've made room for them yeah. to come in through the drugs. Mm -hmm. The doorways, yeah. And the doorway is open. And so, what was that hell like? It was. Um, it had to be hell. Well, as I, I started to lose some, um, I couldn't hold a job. I, I lost relationships, and and I became distant from my family. I started just to isolate myself, and um, I would sit there in the room all by myself, and I would get these suicidal thoughts of taking my life, and um, I, I just wanted to end it all, just end the torment. So, uh, in one of the jobs I. I applied for with a fast food uh, company, and uh, I met this lady named Val, Valerie, and uh, she was a born again Christian. And so we would, she's really always happy, always bubbly, easy to talk to. So I would tell her that um, I was thinking about committing suicide. And she said, Well, you can't do that because you'll go straight to hell because that's one sin you cannot confess. And once you do it, that's it, you're straight to hell. So it kind of like stopped me in my tracks from committing suicide. So I've heard I, of a lot of young men yeah. and older men, not just young men, and, and women. But those thoughts of suicide are constantly bombarding them. Mm. That isn't their own mind, is it, Pastor? I think it's, that's demonic influence because who else would try to kill you or destroy you besides Satan himself? Yeah, because and you're precious in the eyes of God. That's right. You're a precious person that God made. But on the television shows, they show, they show killing and dying and suicide and all these things are just normal things in life, but they're not. They're abnormal, aren't they? That's right. Because Christ isn't really living in them. That's right. And that's what your story is about, mm -hmm. really. So I know there were moments that were really hard for you. Yes. Because we've all gone through them. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? Yeah. You didn't so, so anyway, when after I worked that job just a little bit longer than I quit and I lost contact with Val and I got another job but I was at my other job just sitting there just doing what I normally do then all of a sudden I heard this voice it was small but it was quiet it said Valerie's praying for you and I said what is that so I, I, I listened and it was a little bit louder Valerie's praying for you then it came a third time Valerie's praying for you and as I dwelt in what she was saying this peace just came over me and it was so beautiful and so magnificent. It, I just felt awestruck. So I walked home and I felt the presence all the way to the house. I went and I looked for her phone number. I called up and said, Valerie, I said, I have to tell you, are you praying for me? She goes, yeah, I've been praying for you. I go, I told her about this presence that I felt over my life. She goes, well, that's the Holy Spirit. The peace. And she had, yeah, the peace. Yeah. She, had kept, she kept inviting me to church all these times. And then finally I decided, well, I'm going to go. So finally I just showed up one day at her church and uh, listened to, it was a lady pastor of the church, and they were praying, she they gave the message, you know, and I was just going, okay, okay. And then at the end of the service, um, they was praying for someone, and they were speaking in tongues. I didn't know this at the time, that they were speaking in tongues, but as they started laying hands on this uh, lady and speaking in tongues, I was sitting in the back in the second row, and I was seeing these words just flying around the room. There was Hebrew and Greek and, like, Phoenician and, all these other, I didn't know that at the time, but I know that now they were speaking in other languages. And with my eyes open, seeing these words going around, I was freaking out. And all of a sudden, something was going on the inside of me. Something was stirring, moving around and inside. And I go, oh my goodness. So I was freaking out. So I grabbed the end of the metal chair and I closed my eyes. I held tight. And whatever it was, it was like pushing against me. It was trying to get out. It was that demon or demons I had let in. They wanted to get out of there. So after service, Valerie came up to me and says, How, how'd you like the service? 
She had scared the hell out of me. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah literally. And she was like, and she said, good, praise the Lord. Good. So you were, I've yeah. never heard of anybody being able to see the words. Yeah. I guess you can hear mm -hmm. the different languages in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but to see Hebrew and to see those different words, yeah. that was an unusual visitation of God. Mm -hmm. that, that was, was his, a gift. His gifting yeah. showing. Yeah, or coming to or, the front. Yeah. Or manifesting, yeah. And the uh, unholy spirit living in you couldn't stand it. He wanted to get out of there because yeah. the Holy Spirit was coming in like water pouring into you like this and he didn't like it. The unholy spirit didn't like it. That's so good. And it's so important that we realize when other people are praying, mm. God is moving. Yeah, so what happened? Valerie said, hey. So, so then uh, not too long after that, I joined the Navy. I joined the military and I ended up in Orlando, Florida. But did that demon come out? I got to know that. I, you don't something know. Happened something happened to me. Something happened. But you I, didn't feel I, the oppression of suicide I, again? I, no, I never got those thoughts again it after that. It was stirring, but it didn't come out. But maybe it was there, maybe it wasn't. I'm not too sure, but it was uh, getting there's, just, there's a little, that's kind of like a gray area in my life. So uh, yeah. upon remembering in that life, this, uh, after I joined the military, I got out of boot camp. We were going to school, and um, some guys would ask us to go back out, and I got back into the party scene again and everything. And, all the junk started to come back into my life again. Then I just felt anything. I just felt empty. That's so yeah, so maybe some, maybe it did leave, but yeah. now my, I just felt empty. My life Somehow, felt empty. Now I wanted to change, but I couldn't change. Sometimes being so, empty, too, is a very unpleasant feeling. Yeah. It's a, a no will to live. Yeah, What's, so, what am I living for? I'm empty. Nobody's here to love me. What? There's all kinds of feelings and emotions that come into play as you were growing up mm -hmm. and coming into the Lord. So what happened? So then uh, I made friends with this guy in boot camp. His name was Kyle. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was going through some rough times being in the military. And uh, Linda, one, our, uh, our teacher at the time, one of the classes, she first day she came out, she professed she was a born-again Christian. I'm going, OK, Lord, what's going on here? She bringing another Christian in my life again. So he was going to try, she invited him to church, and he invited me because he didn't want to go alone. So I did. I went <laughs> along with him, you know. And so when I got to the church, they handed out brochures, and I was just glancing at it, and it says, oh, we believe this, we believe that. But something that stuck straight out at me was, oh, we believe in the speaking of tongues. I said, oh, I'm convinced of that. You know, I was already convinced. You didn't have to tell me that. I already knew from what happened to me previously. But Linda didn't know that at the time. So we sat there in the service, the pastor preached a fantastic sermon, and um, Linda invited her, her trailer park afterwards for uh, yeah. lunch. And um, Talk to the camera there. We, we had lunch, we went swimming, had a good time, and, um, and then we went back, she invited us, okay, it's time to go, we're going back to church again. I'm going back to church again. I go, oh, is she crazy going to church twice on one Sunday? I thought that was uh, local. <laughs> so, so I said, okay. I said, okay. So we both went back to church. And that night, the uh, pastor preached another great message, really inspired me, gave me peace in my heart. And uh, when the pastor opened up the altar call, uh, I felt like this hand had reached and grabbed my rib cage and was pulling me forward wow. that night. And uh, I was like, it's just then, it's just like they say on TV, oh, I saw my life flash before my eyes. My whole life just went back from my Then I heard the voice that said, you were in control this time. Let me take control. So I know Christ was knocking at my door in my heart saying, let me come in and dine with you. And so I said, okay, I give up. And I went forward. He literally got in and grabbed your ribs yeah. and pulled you up to the What was altar. the convicting of the Holy Spirit? The truth. Yes. And it was strong. So I went forward and I stood there for uh, it seemed like maybe five minutes, and then someone, an usher, came up to me and says, you need help? You need some prayer for something? He says, yeah, I want to become a born-again Christian. And he started, uh, I saw, saw him literally started to shake and stammer. He couldn't believe what I was asking. So, so he reached, he grabbed my hand, and he led me in this prayer the best he could, you know, because I was serious, and he was freaking him out, I guess. I don't know he why. He didn't know <laughs> yeah. about salvation? I, I don't know, but he was just, wow. maybe the power fell on him. I, I have no idea. So then he, I prayed this prayer. I didn't really feel anything. 
I went back and I was going to go sit down by Linda and everybody else I was sitting there and they looked at me and their gaze were just fixed at me and said, what did you just do? And I thought I did something wrong because of the, what happened to the young man. <laughs> says, I just became a born again Christian. And their f smiles lit up and they were so happy. They said, oh, praise the Lord. Woo! They got oh, joyful. And then I know that I know that I know that I'm saved, filled. And three days later, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, wow. speaking in tongues. You knew that you knew that you knew. I knew that I knew that I knew. And I would pray that everyone's experience be like that, that when they receive Christ, it isn't just from the words, the teeth out, but that they know that they know they've been born again. And every sin has been blotted out. You know, the Lord's showing you your whole life like that up till now and saying, you did it your way, you know, mm -hmm. like, Frank Sinatra, I did it my way, yeah. all right, that's another one. Mm -hmm. You did it your way, and then he said, I want to do it my way now. Let me have control of your life. And that's the key. When you are saved, you not only turn away from your sin, but you give your life to Christ, and you ask the Holy Spirit in so he can help you turn away. You can't turn away from sin, I'm convinced, without the Holy Spirit's help. Just like you can't turn away from cigarettes or alcohol yeah. or drugs or anything without asking God yeah. and the power of the Holy Spirit to come in and help you. A lot of people do, but then they turn back into the sin again. Yeah. You know? Because they're spirit of addictions. They're yeah. sp and they have to be controlled by the power that's God. Right. You know? So I've been drug free ever since May 8, 1983. I've been drug free. May 8, 19? 1983. Faith is Samuel. Faith Assembly of God, Orlando, Florida. I've been drug free ever since then. Praise God. Well, how was that when you got drug free? I mean, was it that time when you were saved and baptized and filled with the Spirit, or did it take time to walk your salvation out? It, I, it was just like all of a sudden, it just boom. It it's left like you? It, the desire to do the drugs, to do wow. the alcohol, and the, wow. and the smoke, the cigarettes, just like boom, just wow. stopped me dead in my tracks, which was good. That's I needed great. it. That's uh, great. That it, really it, happens, see? It really yeah. happens. and you, yeah. it, it, Sometimes you can't explain how it happens. Mm -hmm. This really happened to me. I mean, I'd love to see uh, boys and girls and men and women saying, hey, I was uh, delivered out of the hands of the devil and I don't want to smoke anymore and that's I don't right. want to drink anymore and I don't want drugs anymore. That's the greatest miracle of ever because the Holy Spirit's coming into the holy temple now and kicking out all those devils. That's right. Like you said, he was trying to kick out that yeah. spirit of suicide. Mm -hmm. And that takes you over onto the wrong side that's right. if you do that. That's right. I, it's sad. So how did you become a pastor? And where did you meet your lovely wife? Well, I, I met my wife at Waikiki Beach. Uh, I was just about to get out of the Navy. Um, mm -hmm. I had just gone through a relationship that was you know, kind of shaky. And then I met her. I, so I, I was in Australia in, in, the, in the ship, and I prayed to the Lord. Oh, I don't want anything to do with women or nothing. Or Absolutely, that was it. I thought when I met her, I said, Lord, you remember that prayer I prayed? Can you kind of just forget that prayer? <laughs> but like three weeks later, I asked her to marry me. But I think that that prayer you prayed is, I don't want to meet women, I don't want to meet anybody, but who you want me to meet, was a good prayer. Yeah? yeah? Yes. And God heard that, and he knew you weren't going to mess around anymore. Let's say it like it is. Yeah. And then he said, okay, my son, I'm well pleased with you. I want to send you a beauty. And he sent you Kuhle, and you yeah. met her walking on my, come on, I want to hear a little love story. Well, walking was, Waikiki, yeah. oh, he's got none. <laughs> well, I was away from the church. Uh, I was attending a, a church in Waikiki, and they were having a baptismal on the beach. Yeah. And I was gone for on uh, what they call Westpac for like six months. So she had joined the church for about like three months or so. And um, while you were gone, while I was gone, and then because when she met me on the baptismal, I heard that we went. She thought I was a tourist <laughs> or someone just visiting for the first time. So I met her and her mom, and they said, "Hi, this is my guardian." And I said, "Oh, hi." And it was. Uh, um, Ever since then, uh, and you we fell just in love with her. And three weeks later, you're married. I, I asked her to marry me. You asked her to marry. She say yes. Coolie, what'd you say? I said yes. Go put your <laughs> put your microphone up. I said yes. You said yes. We met in July. Um, he, the end of July, 
and he proposed on his birthday, which is the beginning of August, and the following April we were married. So for Aww. once in your life, <laughs> you've met the right man. <laughs> mama, what did you say, Mama? I said I would question it. He thought I was the guardian. Yeah. Put on the mic. We can't hear you unless you speak into your mic. There. I would have questioned it. He thought I was a guardian angel. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she was introduced as the guardian. Then, so. The guardian. Right. Well, it doesn't hurt for mamas to be guardian angels, <laughs> right, Michelle? <laughs> okay, whatever you say. Because you've got a 21-year-old and a 19-year-old and an 11-year-old coming up, <laughs> and she's got no husband there to take care of, so you are... Uh, I don't need a husband, sorry. Okay, that's fine. That's what you said. I don't okay, I don't want any men or any women in my life. I'm all through. Oh, that's no. great. She Get just ready. said it. <laughs> we got it on air. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> I don't know who it was. Some prophet said, Shelly, you might meet your husband on the TV or with a lady prophet. So you got to. Mrs. Moki wants to say yes, something. Yes, Mrs. Moki. You know, it it uh, behooves mothers to pray for their uh, children's spouses. And then I told Kule, make a list. Specific, which you want the Lord to to give you in a husband, and she was even down to the mustache. No, really, you asked for a mustache. Yeah. I listed profession. I listed height, age requirement. Couldn't be, you know, um, too close to my age. Had to be between two and eight years older than me. You know, I was very specific, oh. and oh my and, uh, yeah, and no, went down the list. You know, musically yeah, inclined. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm looking at him now. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. The, and how long did you let? How long? After you wrote the list, did he come into fruition? I believe at 16, I, I wrote the list oh and started yeah, started my list, and um, but we, and we got married at 19 when I was oh okay, 19. Okay, so it took three oh, years. Oh, I was a 19 year old too. So you've had a good long marriage together we'll here. Celebrate 20 years this April. 20 wow. years. Wow. Congratulations. And then you went over and became what uh, was your inspiration to be a, a pastor? Both well, of you. Uh, going back to Lakewood, Colorado, the, the, the same church I had gone back on when I was in the Navy, went back on leave, and they, uh, there was a lady, and she had a prophetic message for me, and she goes, a preacher. She goes, preacher? And she says, you feel the call to the ministry? I said, whatever. I said, I feel something. But, and so, he said, so they prayed for me for the future ministry. Wow. So and how long did it take before you got into that future um, well, ministry? Well, when I met her, we were kind of like talking things out, and I said, I feel a calling in my yeah. life to be a pastor. And then we prayed about it, and then one day we bought tickets to California, and we ended up uh, just leaving. We had uh, um, our first baby already, and, and, and we how left. how many children have you got? I have four children. Four children. Mm -hmm. And what did Papa Moki, Smokey Moki, think about this young man, this fine young man coming into his daughter's life well <clears throat> you know i just sat back and let mama take care of stuff <laughs> <laughs> she's the one with all the weapons <laughs> you know right down to the last part which is the grandchildren yeah. you know she, she carried a big stick speak softly that's a secret wow. weapon is mama's prayer that's it mama's so prayer mama's unusual prayer yeah so what did mrs moki say what did mrs moki say Cool, like give her the mic or talking that other mic right there, babe. What did you say? Then she said, I want to get married to Arthur. And what did you say? Yeah, I just asked her. Uh, she had two boys at the time. One was studying to be a doctor, and one was, was Arthur. Oh. And they, they both exactly fit the list, even to the mustache. Wow. So I said, one's going to have to study eight years, and he's going to make you very wealthy one day. And one's going to be a, a pastor, and he's not going to make you wealthy. <laughs> I said, but he's going to love you very dearly. I said, so, and he's going to always be in your hip pocket. I said, so, there's your choice. I can see that your husband loves you very dearly by the whole family that surrounds you. And we mamas don't know how good it is. And we are almost through with the show. And I love the fact, and God has got so many great things ahead of you, son. Mm -hmm. Not just the preaching and the teaching and the playing on the drums over there, but so many wonderful things. Could you take us out with some really good music, Pastor Moki, and family? <laughs> Oh, 
the father, call, call the father, call the father, call, call the father, who call the father, call, call the father, call the father, call, call the father, call, call the father, call the father, call. It stayed loud and clear in his words so dear. It's plain for you to see that when you need a guy, he's by your side, calling him and you will see. Call him, everybody call him. Doesn't matter if it's day or night, the time is always right. If you want to hear from heaven, call on him. Call the Father, call, call the Father, call the Father, call him. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me, and I will answer you. So take him at his word, test what you've heard, and you will see his word is true. Call him, everybody call him. Doesn't matter if it's day or night, the time is always right. If you want to hear from heaven, call on him. Call the Father, call, call the Father, call the Father, call him. There'll be no busy signal or voicemail, and the call is always free. It's a direct line to our Lord divine, and he's waiting to hear from you and me. So call, call him, everybody call him. Doesn't matter if it's day or night, the time is always right. If you want to hear from heaven, call on him. Call the Father, call, call the Father. 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 from heaven call any time so what you waiting for pick up the phone <laughs> call the father and is that what you do pastor Moki? you pick up the phone and pick call up the phone and oh, call so the father and how do you get saved how did I get saved? Yeah, how do you do with, you've got about four minutes left. Okay. <laughs> folks, you folks out there listening to this wonderful program today, I know you want to meet Jesus. And just repeat after me, and you're going to know who he is. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. Take away all my hidden sins right now. Lord, I say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God who died for us, now sits on the right hand side of God and intercedes for us. Satan, I rebuke you. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Come into my heart and be my personal Lord, Master, and Savior. In Jesus' name. If you have repeated that, you are now saved. You mean we're in a family? The we family are, of God. Family Just of God. Just like you're a whole family a of whole God. Family. See, Praise the Lord. We, they belong now to us. We're all the same family. Amen. Doesn't matter what your denomination, doesn't matter. And, and the one wonderful thing, all of your sins are forgiven. All your sins are forgiven. Nobody in this world can forgive you all of your sins but Jesus yep. and God the Father. Including the hated ones. What's that? Don't hidden forget the ones. hidden ones. The hidden one? The hidden sin. Oh, I don't know what the hidden one is. Oh. You're going to you have better to check hurry up and tell show. us before we get off the air what's the hidden sin. No, but they'll have to next time. Oh, next time. Next time. <laughs> I'll visit out on the air the next time. I kind of think I know, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I want you to know, thank you so much, dear family. I want you to know, and thank you, my daughter, Michelle, that it's all about knowing. How about a little music behind me, Moki? It's all about knowing who your family is. It's all about knowing Christ. And you know that you can go to the Lord and you can go to people who know the Lord. And when you're really in an uptight place and you don't know where to turn, turn to somebody who knows Jesus and say, brother, sister, help me. I want to know him better. Pray for me like Valerie prayed for Pastor Arthur. Look at him, he's a pastor now. Wow. Pray for your children, that they have the right ones to marry. And you notice mama gave the daughter the choice of two men with a mustache. One was gonna make a lot of money as a doctor. The other one was a pastor who doesn't make a lot of money. We know that, but his treasure is in heaven. And you've got a lot more loving when you've got somebody who has Christ in the oven is what I'm saying. It's just so much better. And you know what? 
your prayer for your daughters, your brother, your mother, your sister, your daughter who don't know Jesus, they count. I hear that all the time. Valerie's prayer came down when he was just real still and he didn't know what to do. He was so empty. Her prayers touched his ears. Valerie is praying. Valerie is praying. You really want to spook somebody out, tell them I'm praying for you every night at 10 o'clock. And then pray for them. And they're going to call you up and say, hey, what's going wrong with me? I'm feeling this at 10 o'clock every night. Somebody's praying for me. Did I just speak pigeon? Uh-oh, watch out. Because my neighbor said I would never be a... Uh, Come on, a, a local. A, a local. I was always going to be Kama Ina because I had blonde hair and green eyes. But you know what? I just love you guys, and I pray that you love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, your strength. Everything that is within you, pray. And he will come, and he'll give you a life full of wonderful dreams. And you know, he has a destiny for you. Yes. And on my next show, next week, you're going to hear the prophetic word, and Prophet Nathan and I are going to talk story. And my daughter, I'm going to tell you what the difference between a psychic and a prophet is. There is a difference. There's a definite difference. And you don't want to go to the bad one. You want to stay with the holy prophet and not the unholy psychic. Yes. So we're going to talk story about that, and we're going to have some people on, and we're going to actually have live prophecy on the air. I want to teach you what a prophet really is. And I'm not just an evangelist. I'm not just, um, as I'm wrapping up, I'm not just an interviewer, but my call besides love and the TV is prophecy. And that's what you read on the screen there, Lady Prophet Phyllis. Will you come back and join us again next week? And I've got a brand new address now. If you want to write story, talk story to me. If you've got something you want to talk story on the air and it's really good or you want to sing or dance, come on, write me. Tell me, okay? God bless you all now. May the Spirit of the Lord be with you and give you a wonderful day. We love you now. Bye-bye, Arthur. We wave bye-bye. Bring your ohana. It's time to watch the show.